Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Abby and Paul is currently laying just out of frame, <laughs> so we can't see him. But um, he is here, my service dog Cass. And I figured I'd do a video today just kind of talking about the things that Cass and I use when we go into public and that pretty much a lot of service dog teams use when they go into public spaces um, as far as like public access work and um, just anything involving going out into the world with our service dogs. So that includes things like bowls and you know, kibble and the whole nine yards, which I want to show you in this video. So it's kind of like a, a little bit of like a checklist you could say of just basically things that us service dog handlers tend to carry with us when we go out with our service dog but i thought this might be an interesting video because it would just kind of introduce you into the world of service dog handlers and what we carry with us on a daily basis and maybe even a little bit into how much work it is to take a service dog with you everywhere you go or whenever you need them depending on <laughs> what your situation is but yeah kind of you know, drop some people down to reality a little bit because obviously as a service dog handler, I hear a lot about the whole, I wish I could take my dog everywhere, but the reality is that most people just want to take their dog to places they feel like taking their dog <laughs> and it's not, they don't really want to take their dog everywhere. They're talking about like randomly when they want to go to restaurants or when they shop in a grocery store or whatever. They're not talking about the dentist or doctor's appointment, which is what my dog also goes to. <laughs> So I just wanted to show you guys what a service dog handler might take with them on the day in and day out and just kind of introduce you to the world of what we carry with us, what might be necessary, and that it's not all glamorous, <laughs> but um, you know, some of it is great and some of it's not so great and some of it is stuff you'd obviously expect. So I figured I'd go over what I take with me on a daily basis and then I'd also go over the gear that I have for cast and what we use and things like that. So I'm hoping this video can be of interest to you guys and hopefully you like it. <laughs> okay, so I figured I'd first start with the things that I keep in my purse personally. This is basically to make sure that I have everything I could possibly need on an outing in my purse. And I usually just keep it there because that I never have to check and make sure it's there. So I figured I'd start with all the things that I keep in my purse all the time. Um, and if I'm switching purses, I'll just move everything from this purse to another purse. So I have my purse here. This is not service dog related, but I figured I'd say that I do keep sunglasses and that's just to deal with the sunlight. Um, cause it's awful <laughs> at times. But anyways, service dog stuff now. So first off, we have a collapsible bowl. I used to have smaller collapsible bowls than this. Go crochet. I used to have smaller collapsible bowls than this, but I ended up switching to this bigger one because I have a big dog. <laughs> and the small bowls just were not working out. I felt like I had to reveal them too much and I felt like his slob got in them really easily and it was just a mess. So I got this much bigger one. I think it holds two cups of water or something like that, but it's perfect because I can just fill it up and usually he'll drink what he wants out of it and then I can just pour it out. Unlike little ones where I had to fill those up like two, three times <laughs> because it was so small. So I really like this one. Also none of this stuff is sponsored, but um, if you guys are interested in any of the things that I'm showing, just comment below and I will go ahead and tell you what the product is in a reply. The next thing that I keep with me that is always in my purse is poop bags. So like that's part of what I was talking about when I said it's not all glamorous. Um, and I also keep hand sanitizer because poop bags. <laughs> so I keep them together. And one of the things that I really like about this one specifically is that it came with this like loop thing that you can put around your neck. And so what I basically really like about this is that if I am just stopping somewhere to have him use the bathroom, I can leave all the rest of the stuff in the car and I can just take just the poop bags and just the hand sanitizer. Next we have his gentle eater. I keep this in my purse at all times with the other two things that I mentioned because it's small and I could keep it in the dog closet with the rest of his gear but I just feel like it's just easier for me when it's just sitting in my purse and I can just take it out of my purse and put it on him in the car before we get out or I'll put it on him um, before we go into a store or something like that and I just find that easier than trying to remember it when it's in the dog closet because I find that I really do not remember it <laughs> if I don't have it in my purse. So that's just something that I personally keep in my purse because it's just easier for me. I'm sure there's a lot of people that keep it with the vest but I don't keep it in my purse. I also keep these like little little ear wipes. I don't actually use them for his ears anymore because I, I don't know. I feel like this stuff was not really working for me. If it works for your dog that's great but for me I didn't feel like it was working. I just got them so that like I can use them if I felt like I need to just wipe anything like his feet or something like that. I also keep a bag of kibble. This is empty because <laughs> obviously I don't keep it full of kibble in my purse. That would be weird. But yeah, I'll fill it with food before I go out and I use these as his 
like just reinforcement of like normal behaviors like healing when I ask him to sit down if he's when he's tasking I use really high reinforcement with this like when I tell him to sit I may give him like two kibbles or something but if he's doing like if he's actively tasking like you saw in the other video that I made about shopping with autism then I give him lots of kibbles to basically just like really up the ante of how great it is to task <laughs> I want him to love tasking and he does it's his favorite thing in the world and you know I think part of the reason is because I make sure that when he's tasking that is when he gets the biggest rewards no matter what it is so like if he's tasking at home if he's tasking outside if he's tasking in the store whatever it's always going to be the thing where he gets jackpots while tasking because it's so important I mean that's basically the service dog's job other than like being unobtrusive and not potting in doors like tasking is the thing that makes a service dog a service dog so that is the thing that I obviously want him to do the best at <laughs> and I want him to help me with because that's what that's how he helps me it's tasking it's a big part of how he helps me I should say I don't have his high value treat bag with me in the room but I do have his treats that I use which are his high value treats which is basically just if there's something that I feel like he's really struggling with or there's something that you know is a little off-putting if something's scary and you want to show your dog hey this isn't so bad high value treats <laughs> they go a long way and obviously he has like a lot lots and lots of treats believe me he has like three treats right now just in my room alone so <laughs> so he has a lot of treats but I just don't like to give him a whole lot of treats in public I don't want to start the habit of having him have a bunch of different high value treats in public because I don't want it to be like this thing where he starts always wanting the high value treats so that's why I only use the high value treats for those specific situations and everything else is kibble but that's just how we do it it's not like invalid for someone else to be like I only use high value treats for my dog because my dog won't work for kibble that's fine it's partly why I love labs because <laughs> labs will work for kibble they're always down to eat kibble and work for it and do things for it so that's why I love my labs so before I go over gear I also wanted to just kind of show you guys this running coat um, <laughs> um it's old so it's not it's not sparkly clean or whatever but um it's just something that we use when it's raining a lot of people think raincoats are for like spoiled dogs <laughs> and people who spoil their dogs but honestly raincoats are so convenient because it stops you from having to completely dry them <laughs> when you come inside when it's raining because if the water gets on their back and they get drenched you know this is a double coated dog so <laughs> the water getting in there is like it's it's gonna be a lot of drying to get that out and the raincoat just prevents it from really going deep into his coat so I just have to wipe off his like legs um, and I'll wipe off his head and I'll do a little bit for his body as well wherever the water got the raincoat does a really good job of keeping him dry and making sure I don't have to do a lot of drying when he comes inside or if we're going into like a place of business or something like that a grocery store or whatever making sure that if it's raining outside I don't want him soaking wet in the grocery store like <laughs> I just don't Part of a handler's responsibility is keeping the dog clean so I mean I don't want him dripping all over the store. So I would say that's all like the base level gear um, and things that we take with us on the daily basis when we go out in public. And the next thing I'm going to be going over is just his like gear that he wears when working. And I'm going to go from like least used to most used. Because we definitely we definitely have a go-to that we use like all the time and pretty much every time you see me put a video up it's going to be him in that but I do have different sets that I do like and I will use on occasion. So this harness would be probably his least used gear simply because like I said I really like vests because they do the talking for you to the public and this obviously has nothing on it. I can attach something to the back that says something a cape to where it'll like say something with these two earrings but I just don't like it. I really like to put my dog in one thing and be done with it. Like I don't like to have them in one thing and then there's something going on the back. <laughs> so I really don't use this much, but I just go ahead and keep it around in case like I'm looking for some, like if in case I need like heavy mobility for a day or something. I say heavy mobility very loosely by the way, because this is not like a heavy mobility harness. It's more of a, like a little bit of counterbalance. But the reason why I say heavy mobility is just because when I use his harness, I tend to use it, the mobility side of it more than I use his vest. 
because his vests usually just have pull straps on them so I use it for like for momentum but this I can actually like hold while he's walking so it can be very helpful for that but like I said I don't use this much because I prefer the vests which have words on it because just let's be real I have anxiety and <laughs> The words really help me where this will not. The things that people do when he has only this on is so much. It's so much. Versus when they have a vest that they can read that tells them not to do things. So that is why. My second piece of like gear that I have for him is this one. It's Moana themed. It's a little like ocean and there's like a seashell on the back. And it says the voice inside sings a different song. And it has like a little thingy on it. Let me focus on this for a second. The main reason why I don't really use this one is they typically have a pull strap on them. This does not and that is because I got it to be a vest cape hybrid. But like I said I ended up not really liking that. I really prefer to have just one thing on my dog. And it's not because he specifically like doesn't like two things on him. I just feel like it's too much. I'm very like sympathetic when it comes to my, my animals and stuff and I just think like if I'm a service dog I don't want all that crap on. So <laughs> I just think of him the same way. I'm like if I was a dog I wouldn't want all this crap on me. So I, I would only want one thing. I either want a harness or I want a vest because that's how I am in, <laughs> in like real life basically. You know I always prefer to wear dresses because it's just less restricting. There's less like overall stuff grabbing you. <laughs> I'll probably do more videos of just stuff I'm doing in public but you'll see that I tend to wear dresses a lot and that's just because it feels way less restrictive because it's one piece of clothing it's one garment um rather than like two things like a shirt and a pants or even worse it's like a skirt and like tights and a shirt and a jacket and a scarf like I hate having all those things on <laughs> I really prefer just like one thing but it's funny because I love fashion and I love to see those outfits put together I think people put them together so well it's just like sensory wise for me I, I just need freedom so I'm I'm definitely a summer clothes gal <laughs> so anyways yeah, um, it's because this one doesn't have D rings and it doesn't have a full strap. It's why I don't really use this one that much. But I do love it because it is Moana theme and I love Moana. So this is the third piece and I have a strap attached to it. I actually got this strap for the harness, but like I said, I just didn't really use it that much. So I ended up putting it on this harness instead, which I do really like. So if it's like summer or spring, I find this really great because it's got this like different material inside that's not cloth that's more smooth and like cool to the touch so yeah I find this really helpful for like summery outings if we're going outside somewhere and it's gonna be hot obviously it doesn't have words on it though that tell people to like leave him alone and things like that so that's why it is one that I don't use as much unless it's hot this vest actually was the one that I used to use the most um, but it just has kind of gotten like old and just a little bit more worn down. I did buy this second hand, so it said working canine on it, do not interact. And while I don't mind working canine, I did just wish it said service dog on it because I would sometimes get people asking me that. The ADA doesn't require them to even be vested at all, so obviously they don't really care what you put on your vest. <laughs> But yeah, it was just one of those things where I'm like, I kind of wish it said service dog or assistance dog. And so that was another reason why I kind of wanted to retire this one. Also, I just don't feel like re many people really read the middle of it. Um, and partially that's because when you have a service animal, typically they're going to be next to you like this. The vest will be like this for the general public to see. So this is not really seen unless someone's tall. So I was just like, I really don't feel like I want to put all this on the back of there. I really feel like I want this to be the main thing telling people about him because this is what people are going to be able to see and this other side says it too and then I also got an autism service patch tab because I just wanted to like I wanted something on there that said service on it so I just got this and put it on there and it has a little lab on it and the symbols for autism and it says do not interact again because again do not interact and I also feel like now that I'm looking at this more I feel like this is harder to see with the white um, than the black because it's over blue. I don't know. Like, cause I'm looking at it on camera, I'm like, ah, oh, I feel like you can't really see that white that well. But anyways, <laughs> it served its purpose and it did well for the time that we had it. But like I said, it just got kind of old and I got a second hand. I was like, I really want a new vest that says service dog on it. And that will lead us to his most used vest, the one I got most recently, which is probably could use a wash and like some tightening up, but. <laughs> This is the best that I use the most. It says service dog do not interact and I feel like it's easier to read because it's white on black um, and it has dot in red letters and it has d-rings and pockets and it has the 
autism symbol on the back with a sunflower and it says give us space. I didn't do give us space because I still liked it saying that somewhere, but I didn't want it on here because I felt like that would get too cluttered. With service dog vests, you don't want people to be standing there reading the vest for like so long. You know, you want someone to be able to glance at it, understand that they're not supposed to distract the dog and go, right? So I don't want like give us space and do not interact and do not distract and all those other things on the side of it because that would be like <laughs> a lot to read. You know, I want it to be something that like even children can read and understand and quickly get. So that's why I went with just do not interact, something really simple. And I've noticed that in my personal experience when I've had vests that say do not distract, people don't know what a distraction is, but I've noticed that everyone knows what an interaction is. <laughs> an interaction is pretty much everything you do when you're saying hi to someone. It's a smile, it's a long glance stare thing. Um, it's, you know, it's saying hello, it's petting, it is all of the things. And so that's why I like for them to say do not interact more so because I feel like that's much more specific than do not distract because like I've had people, you know, read his vest that says do not distract and they still talk to him. And I'm like, oh, you're distracting him. Can you please stop? And then they're like, I didn't know that was distracting him. So that's why I really prefer interact because I feel like that's much more specific. I have dog hair on my thing now from his vest. So well, I didn't think that would happen. So that's why I love the do not interact on it. And that's why I use this the most because that service dog, clear, do not interact, it's clear. It's got my pool straps. It's got autism symbol for, you know, if you know, you know, it's got sunflower for hidden disability. And yeah, it's just got everything that I need. <laughs> so I really like it. And then last but not least is the leash that I use every time we go out. I have quite a few leashes, but I only use one for when we're doing like actual public access work. And that's just because I want to keep what we use for public access to stay like mostly clean and like tidy. And I want it to last for a long time. Like I want it to be a leash that looks nice <laughs> and not like something that I take them out every single day with that's getting like wear and tear. But this is my most recent one that I got. It's black with like rainbow color accent. And then I have this leash wrap which says service dog do not distract. And I would have made this say do not interact but I got this a long time ago and I just don't feel like replacing it. So the next one I get will probably say do not interact but for this one I just use do not distract. A lot of the times the only thing you'll see is the strap right here, right? Like you'll see that the dog's in the vest but you won't see what it says until you get to the side. And that's just basically what these straps are for because they sit like this usually and then people can read them before they even read your vest. So that's why I really like them and I find them really helpful. This one is so old. <laughs> you might be able to tell that I got it from him when he was in training because it has bite marks in it. But, <laughs> but um, yeah. I think that's everything that I use for him on the daily basis when we go out and we do public access. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. And you know, I hope you liked the gear and thought it was cute. I think it's cute. I designed the primary vest that we use on my own. And I had someone just kind of bring it to life for me. And yeah, I love it. I have a little lion bracelet on if you're wondering. My bestie sent it to me. She's amazing. And yeah. So I think that's everything. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Cass says bye.